Hey guys, Levi for the Rag Company, and with me, Mr. Gabe Garcia. Howdy. Who helps uh, out with all our production and all that stuff. But today in Detail and Uncut, I wanted to show you guys something that I know a lot of people have been hitting us up about. It's my 20 minute one step, and with Uno Protect and Beadmaker, it's actually doable. Now the polishing is gonna be a 20 minute segment, and then the uh, Uno Protect obviously is gonna take as long as it's yeah. gonna need to take off. But the point is, Gabe here, this is his mom's car. The car's called Mr. Bill. Now, it just needs to be a little brightened up, right? Right, it's looking a little dull. Um, yeah, they don't really polish. Yeah, so Uno Protect is gonna be perfect for this because we're gonna be using it as a enhancement polish. So for those of you guys wondering that maybe have a detail shop and this is something that you do and maybe you're trying to go faster at it, it's taking you maybe an hour and a half to two hours to do this job. This job in polishing terms, not counting washing, not counting prepping, none of that, vacuuming, windows, any of that, but the polishing itself should take you anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes. It should not take you two, three, four hours to do. Remember this job on the exterior like this with a quick you know, polish and a, and a sealant like we're doing, yeah. should be about 150 bucks with a wash, a clay, possibly a light vacuum. But realistically, 30 minutes for me. Right, well, we're, we're gonna hit yeah. that 30 minutes with you, but yeah. I wanna show that any of you guys at home can do this, whether you are you know, a professional detailer or a home hobbyist. The key is you need to get faster and provide the best quality. So yeah. with this car, like you were saying, we've got some, you know, there's just some, some marring, there's some scratches in it. Looks like it's been through the car wash a little bit. It's been bumped, it's been scratched, it's been repainted. It's, it, this car has seen a lot of stuff. Now, if a customer came in, I wouldn't be selling them a full correction on this. No. This car doesn't need it, it's not worth that, but it does need some love. Your parents like taking care of their stuff. Yep. They wanna keep things nice. So this little car is just an extra car in the family and it just, the goal is to have it looking sharp, staying nice, and this Barcelona Red will right. clean up really well. So. Yeah, so hopefully with the polish, and then we let it sit, and then we finish off with Beadmaker, correct? Yep. Yeah, so Uno the Protect, game plan? once it goes on the car, it needs to sit for 20 minutes. And that's so that the waxes can set up. Um, after that, we can do the wipe off with Beadmaker. Now what we're gonna be doing is replacing the sealant that is in Uno Protect with the sealant that's in Beadmaker. That's, uh, that's gotcha. all we're doing. So, okay. um, but Uno Protect is so easy to use. Like I said, the goal is to try and teach everybody how to do this. So yep. let me uh, grab our polisher. So I'm not polishing today because I hurt myself. Um, and so my arm, right arm doesn't really like to work very well. So what we're gonna be doing is this blue coarse wool pad. Now I did a test spot earlier and I think this is gonna give us the most amount of correction with this polish. Got so this it. will get you your best finish possible for the the speed in which we're gonna go around this vehicle. Right, and you, you kind of explained that there's two speeds. Yeah, so there's the tool speed, which is here. It's like four, yeah. I think, Yeah, so we can go four or five, you know, just depending on where we wanna be. Okay. And then your arm speed, which is the motion of how you use the polisher on the surface of the car. Okay. Now. There are gonna be some spots where you're gonna have, maybe you'll see a little scratch or something. I'll ask you to slow down your arm speed. Okay. Like I think there's a mark up here on I the fender. Right here. It's a dent, but it's got a little mar in it. So yeah. you can uh, slow down your arm speed and we can provide a little more correction okay. in that spot. And then the rest of the car and some of these, you know, like these uh, top rails, the doors, you know, a faster arm speed is gonna be easier. And on the faster arm speed, you wanna go at a faster or not higher a, not number. Not a crazy speed, but you know, the, and the motor speed can stay the same. Okay. So the key is just, once you get used to the aspect of it, then we'll, you know, I'll be talking through it. And Sounds good. Go from there, but here's your machine. All right, guys, let's see if I can do this and without messing up. You can pick a spot to start on. I say, let's start on that rear quarter rear panel. Rear quarter panel, okay. So this way, this will be our starting point. We'll make our way all the way around the car and back. So what I usually do is I try to encompass this area. So I usually work my way up top and then I come back down. On one side before moving to the right. front or the back. Yep. Okay. So what I'm gonna say is we're gonna start here. Okay. Stop at the bumper, but make our way up over 
half the roof. And prior to this, come down. you, you kind of explained that you want to do it in a small square, correct? Like you're mowing the lawn. Got two it. Two foot by two foot sections overlapping Kay. and a cross hatch. So Perfect. you're gonna go one way, then the other. Gabe's a high school teacher by trade, so yeah. he should be able to do this. Um, but yeah. <laughs> should be. Should be let's, able to do this. Let's actually see how so this goes we've before we even get that primed far. the pad, so just to show everybody. So we've primed the pad, and what we did was we put four drops, and then I just worked it in, and then I put four more drops. So this is enough product on this. You should be able to get this quarter panel all the way to here with that. With, and then we'll start on here. We'll add with some more. the one pad of with the four what droplets. you've got on there right now. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So set the pad on there, turn the machine on, then hit your uh, lock. trigger lock. Don't have a death grip, a light, easy grip on the machine. Okay. Yep. There you go. I'm going back and forth, opposite, like going along. There you go. Now we're starting our clock somewhere down in the screen for when Gabe started on that quarter panel. The time period is literally when the pad touches the paint. That's when you start your timer. I mean, this is pretty easy. It's not bad. And remember, we're not going for a full true correction. This is purely enhancement. So now that you've gotten up to here, good rule of thumb. Pour it behind the back. Just throw that over your shoulder. And I'm still doing the cross section lines up here, even though it's Yeah, smaller. you don't have to do as much on here. Mostly what I do is I watch the surface and I try and look and see if there's anything else in there. That I think I need it to helps worry about. having good lighting too. Yeah. What's great about Uno Protect is again, if Gabe hits any of this trim, he can polish it. If he hits the glass, he can wipe it off. It's not anything that's gonna hurt. Nice. All right, this might be a crazy question. So I know we talk about doing the panels, doing the paint. Do you, and, and you mentioned on Uno Protect. That you can hit that trim if that's yeah. what you're asking. So that's one thing that I was wondering. So in instances like this, with this, it's gonna, it's, sometimes it's single stage, sometimes okay. it's just vinyl wrapped. Right. Sometimes it's just plastic. Okay. So on this, I would say, wait till the very last step Okay. to hit that because it is going to darken your pad. It's going to turn it black. Yeah, because it's oxidized right. and that oxidation will get on the pad. Right. And if you continue on the paint, then it's you're not. putting the oxidation back Correct. into this paint. Okay. And so, and then we've got an air gun to blow out this pad. Okay. And so when blowing it out, it's very easy. You can turn it on. That's it. We're literally just giving it a quick blowout. All right. And that, you know, fluffs it back up, pulls Four. some of the dead clear out of there. Four dots. You want me to continue going towards the fender? I know you can do half the roof now. Okay. So I'm just working this in. Because it is wool, you kind of got to make sure you get enough in Product the surface. On there. All right. Okay. So now do the roof and go as far as you can reach. Usually I say like halfway. So you're starting to kind of adjust your length. That way you're not dragging your cord on the, where you just polished, because gotcha. you'll mar that. So you can go to Home Depot and get like a little platform ladder. That way you can climb up on that. I'm gonna grab one. All right guys, as you're watching this, you'll notice I'm a little short.
There you go, Dane. Gabe, you can hop right up on there. Sweet. Thanks, man. Oh, so much better. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so now you got the hang of it. You got a little more speed into it. Yep. Now you can drop down. I'm gonna say go across this way. Okay. And hit the bottom or start at the bottom and work your way up. I so could. Go try and keep like a, uh, try and work a car like a pattern. So. That way you're always in constant motion. So as you can see, we've gone up. Now we can go down and across and then back up. That way we're trying to limit the amount of movements around the vehicle. I will say it helps having the nice tools. It does. On the weekends when I do this, I'm not gonna lie, I have a Harbor Freight special. That's all right. But it does the job. It's a good little machine that works. Yeah. So I'm just doing what you... Now, depending on how dirty the car is, you don't always have to blow it out Yeah. every panel. We're doing an enhancement, so... I did notice on the roof, though, it did pick it, up... It if... did pick up a lot. Yeah, you, you notice right there. see how dirty that pad is. So I'm just going opposite, and now I should be good, right? Yep. Theoretically, I should be able to get from the back to the front, okay? Yeah, you should be able to make it almost to that front fender. Okay. With this one. All right. Some more cord. Um, Last question. I always ask questions. I always tell kids it's okay to ask questions. <laughs> Is it okay to go on top of the handles? Yes. Okay. Just careful. Don't worry, I think, about, don't I think, worry about getting in the cups. I think what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to spread the product out a little bit because... You don't have to do that, but you can. Well, if I go directly onto this, yeah, I'm afraid I'll there. spray it. Yeah, don't start there. Start on a flat panel. Right. Okay. Sweet. Keep that pad parallel to the surface. There you go. And because these doors are probably nicer than most, I'm gonna ask you to pick your speed up a little bit, your arm speed. So when I sweep left to right. Yeah. Because there's not as many scratches and things that we need to worry about. Okay. Now, a lot of it also is teaching your body how to move. So you see Gabe's on his knees, and that's a little harder. If you pop up on your feet and try and squat, woo, you get a little bit more burn in your ankles and your calves, but you'll be able to shimmy better. Many detailers know this, and uh, that's, it's always not a good thing because it hurts sometimes. But you can move quicker. You can also, in this position, get a rolly stool and then just slide back and forth. That way you don't have to make your movements. Get that pad closer to the surface. There you go. Try and keep that level, the pad to the level to the surface. I will say on the lower panels, it's definitely harder keeping it flat on yeah. the surface. So here, I'm gonna say, because we're gonna hit this fender, we're gonna give it a little bit more product. Okay. 
And Sounds then good. on this part right here, I want you to just slow down your arm speed. So it's the same kind of quick pace on the rest of it, but then just spend 30 seconds extra on this one spot. Okay. This spot, because this is where well, there's the- a big scratch right That's here. where we talked about that scratch yeah, earlier. It's all right here and all right. then here. All right, let's do this. Okay. Okay. There you go. Now, again, we're going to hit a big panel, so like the roof, we should probably blow this off. Okay. So, I will say this, from behind the camera, it looks so simple. <laughs> I, I'm not kidding you guys. I don't know how many videos I've sat behind the camera watching Levi or Anthony or Ivan or even the junk man back in the day. Yep and you guys make it look so easy. So I'll make it easy to show you on the hood Cap. how my normal, this is my normal speed when doing these. Cap. Jeez, man. So it's more about learning how to handle the tool, getting into your speed control, just your body. Yeah. Being able to handle it. I can't really use my right arm, it's, which if you noticed, I was literally just kind of, setting the tool on yeah. my palm and guiding it with my left. Yeah. So I think I think people, it's a, and, and you know, I, I feel this way too. A lot too. of just getting comfortable with it. It's getting comfortable and it's also intimidating in a sense because you don't want to mess up the paint. You're not going to mess anything up. But the biggest know, thing is, like, but, but it is hard to get through it, your brain. It's hard to get through your brain yeah. that you've got a pad going at a certain speed on your paint. And you know, you always hear the horror stories of someone burning through paint. You will or, burn through paint with this. So, uh, well you will, but you got to stay on a spot for a really long time. And we got a video about that and you can watch it. So, all right. Bumper, and then we've got our last panels left, Kay. and uh, we are racing the clock. Okay, where are we so, at? Does anyone have time? Dane? Don't have a time, but. I'm starting and stopping the clock in the video every time you start the machine. Oh, he's nice. Did that work? There you go. Perfect. And yes, I'm including Levi in that number when it's Are done. you? Because he did the hook, it wouldn't be fair. Yeah. I just I just bought us a little time with that. How are we looking there, Levi? Is it looking all right? Yeah, it looks fine. Okay. Remember, the goal of this is more like thinking about like you're applying the product. On some of these panels, there's no need to correct it. We're just applying 
product. Make it look shinier. Yeah, think of like putting on a coat of wax back in the day. Keeping it flat as much as I can. There's a lot of different lines and contours in here. Well, that's why we picked the 15. I'm gonna get to the end of the bumper. Yeah, and you can probably make it onto that fender and get that fender done too. Because this fender looks great. So just go fast. So I just go quick over it. Because that fender's been definitely repainted recently. And you can look up here, if you can see this. Woo, that was a good run. <laughs> I'm probably gonna say we should clean this pad, maybe yeah, a little bit. Probably some bugs and stuff that you picked up. Yeah. And you can also polish the headlights, you can do a bunch of stuff. The headlights just got refinished, so we're not gonna worry about those. All right. And you did miss that mirror over there, but that's okay. You can come back and do that at the end when you do your windows. Okay. There you go. Now, I'd probably just start on the roof. Okay. Get that half of the roof and you, then work your way back down. You want to hand me that stool? Yeah. I wish I was born with the genes of being tall, but that did not work out in my favor. It's all right. These things are like 30 bucks and they're worth the investment. People always come up to me and say, Mr. Garcia, why are you so short? I was like, I don't know, man. I had a choice. It's yeah. like, yeah, like I had a choice. Now this roof is pretty rough. Yeah. And the biggest thing about the roof is that, you know, no matter how much you try to cut and polish it and compound it and get it looking sharp, people still use their roofs to do stuff. I'm yep. sure your mom puts her purse on the roof. I'm sure, you know, dad will put a cup of coffee up there. You know, there's always gonna be damage because it's just the normal usage of humans on like putting stuff on their roof before they get in or sliding a box to the other one on that side or I'm groceries. Sure this roof's got some dings from kayaking back and when. Kayaking and throwing stuff on there. So the point is like, yes, there are still some scratches and light scratching, but our eyes aren't going to see it because right. of the way that the, you think I got enough to do the pillar yeah, you can and make it the all rail? the way down to that corner Kay. panel at least. Back. I'm going to get the mirror first this time. Okay. Ooh. Careful. Probably don't do that. Yeah. Just watch your edges. So when you're transferring, for instance, like I was just there, from mirror to panel, do you shut the machine off and restart it, or do you just continue? Well, it depends on how much product's on the pad. Yeah. If there's, if I know I've just loaded it, I'm not gonna do that because I'll get sling everywhere. Right. But if it's product that's worked into the pad and I know I can make that jump, I don't worry. Because you can see you've still got a ton of product on this pad. I was just gonna say, I don't think we need to stop yet. Yeah. And that's the key is, you know, the biggest thing is if you're working on good clean panels, you don't need to worry. It's when you're removing oxidation or you're working on a dirtier spot or you're working on the black. That's when I'd recommend keeping it cleaner.
Okay. How are we looking so far? That looks fine. Okay. Whew. Grab the air. Let's air it. I'm gonna come around this way. No, I'm coming behind you. Oh, James. okay. We'll meet in the middle. Perfect. Okay. Okay, so, put some product on there. So the other thing, if you guys had a detailer's helper belt, you could always have your product right here in your pocket. Now we don't have to keep walking back and forth. It's another way to save some time. I'm wondering if Dane's big cargo pants would carry all of these. Yeah, or if you had Dane's cargo pants. I mean, that's one way of doing it. That would hold the Dane, rest of it. Dane, where do you get your cargo pants? Oh. Oh. Uh, nice try, though. But typically, he has cargo pants, just saying. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to work my way actually from the front and back, since Kay. we're going towards the back. Don't want to repeat. Okay. Yeah, the key to the tool is just keep it flat with the surface. You know, you want to let it do its job. Too many times I see guys just with a death grip holding on for dear life. Don't worry, Jimmy. Jimmy says you missed the spot. Jimmy did? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jimmy. Hey, speaking of missing, we heard you guys are missing Wash Wednesdays. Keep watching out, they'll be coming. Do, do you guys, oh, do, do, you guys like, do that? No, that's a great plug though. I like the way you just added that in. I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> added value. Yeah. All right, so. I do say, I do see some missed spots, but. Yeah, so this spoiler, has, this is active braking, I believe is what we said. Yeah, that arrow is what you're looking so, for. So around here, you need to just be careful. Okay. So one thing I do when I get into a spot like this is I'll check my pad clearance. So just set the tool on the, on the spot here. Okay. And the biggest thing is to see how far I can get in without hitting the, uh, you know, the side. So I'll, usually I'll move the machine over. So Dan, if you so come around this see, side right here. You know, when, the, Perfect. when it's at its farthest. And that way I just kind of guess like, I want to be right in this area right, right here. So if I go too far in, You're gonna be I hitting. could probably get it, but there's a chance I could take a chunk of paint out. Don't so, want that. I don't want to do that. Okay. So just be glad just, you're not using the kamikaze vacuum plate because uh, that's not for that's beginners. It's for experts like myself. Uh, Where so are we the at, biggest Dane? thing. No idea. No idea, but we're going to keep going. You're doing really good. Kay. So. Uh, just watch out for that. Try and keep, you know, at least a finger's breadth from the farthest part of this. Okay. Um, and then you can jump on top of this and polish that. Got it. Okay. Go that way and then I'll come back. Yep. This is where I would slow your arm speed. Just so that you don't get ahead of yourself. Slow it a little bit? Yeah. Okay. That way you have more control. Plus, if you notice, it's a little more rough back here. So if you slow your arm speed down, you'll give the product a little more time to work. There you go. So 
you can see Gabe slowed down his arm speed because this spoiler actually has a lot of scratching and marring on it. But that way we can allow the product to do its job as well as the pad. And it's literally just slowing down our body on how we move that polisher. The tool speed has stayed the same. Now if Gabe wanted to, he could add a little more pressure, a little more downward pressure by pushing down on the pad a little more. But for this case, we don't really need to worry about that. That and that's a little loose. Yeah, well, you don't want to break the spoiler. Yeah. We don't, All right. we don't want to spoil it. Yeah. yeah I love these. Oh, uh, jeez. All right. Bumper, <laughs> rear tail lights, back of the tailgate of the, of the trunk. What do you want um, first? So you can pick either one. I usually do the bumper first. Okay. And then when I get around, I come back and I hit this. So maybe hit the top of the lid and then come back on the bottom of the lid. You can do that too. Okay. Let's do that. So. I'm wondering if Anthony would be proud of this. Little do you guys know, I practiced on his Honda before we started this. Very nice. Sorry. He doesn't even know. Alrighty. Okay. Maybe we should probably do it. I don't think you need any more. I think you could probably finish this up because this back panel doesn't look that bad. Okay. So just do a nice clean sweep. Yeah, just go across everything. Careful in here, get near the license plate. Um, you can go over the emblems if you want. Try not to jam it into the emblems. Yeah, because it's a pain in the butt to clean. Well, not with detail factory brushes, it's not. So it's a like drop that? for you, you like guys. That? Ah, I All like right. that plug. Okay. Here we go. Let's get it done. And You're in the home stretch. Don't get oh. too close into that license plate. Yeah. That's what I'm worried. That's what happens, huh? Yeah. How do you get in these areas when you have this jam? So Pop sometimes you either call a friend or a tennis ball will work great too. Okay. So 
What you usually do is you can take a tennis ball. Place it on the bottom. You can put it on the bottom or you can shove it right here in this corner and it'll just hold it. But you got me, so I'll just hold it for you. He should be a teacher. <laughs> You'd be a good teacher. Thanks. What about Anthony? You think Anthony would be a good teacher? Yes. What grade I, level? Um, I think he'd probably have the most fun with high school kids because he'd like to impress them. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so you're done. Now, if you want to hit the uh, trim, you can. If you want to hit that other mirror, you can. If there's any glass, you can. Thing you got to remember is like this, let's say this job was $150 detail. It was a one step with this, a wash, a quick polish with some bead maker, and then a quick vacuum and windows, dress the tires, wipe down the wheels. My guys would make like 50 bucks. Yeah. Okay. I'd charge 150, pay you $50 for doing this. So, so your job would then be how fast can I get it done? Because the quicker you get it done. To maximize that 50 bucks. But you have to be good because, I mean, e even in the places where I was really focusing, where the panels were, for instance, that side or the lower rocker panel yeah, areas. Be able to see it. You have to be able to see it. You have to be able to make sure that you're not missing it. Otherwise, right. it's completely noticeable. So you, you can speed through this. And the process of this video is to show that you can get a car, especially this size, done yeah. within 20 to 30 minutes. But also... Polishing step. Yeah, polishing step. Just the polishing step. But the main factor of it is, is depending on, especially if it's your own car, you might want to take more time doing so. Right. And especially if you're new at this, such as myself, I'm not a pro at this. Uh, well, you've, wa you've uh, watched a lot of them. Yeah, I've watched <laughs> a lot, but I still go a little slow. So, I mean, like, Jimmy's right. I missed right here, for instance. Yeah. Dane, you want to come around here? But I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get these. Yeah, knock those out. Okay. Or Jimmy, you can pop in on here. So now this... This has been over 20 minutes. We're gonna take a little bead maker. For people who haven't heard, remind them what the uh, timing procedure is. So, so the Uno Protect has to set up for 20 minutes from the time it's applied. So that 20 minutes is designed to allow the three solid waxes in it to be able to set up. Then what we're doing is once it's removed and wiped off, then it takes another four hours to fully set the sealant as long as it doesn't get wet. But because we're getting it wet with bead maker, we are instantaneously replacing the sealant in Uno Protect with bead maker. Ooh, it's slick. So given it its slickness, its gloss, all that stuff. Sweet. All right, I'm gonna finish this up. Okay. I'm going to get a that. So Gabe, here's a good time. You see this? Yeah. Just set that machine on there for a little while. Right here? You see that little line? That blend line? Yeah. Is that in this area? Yeah, just let it work a little bit. It's almost virtually gone. You can't. Better. Yeah. You can still see it, but it's better. So. It's a clean little car, but unfortunately, in its day, when my sister was in college, it had a couple little bumps. Not fully her fault, but. I remember this car clear back in high school. Right? Back in the day? Yep. Jimmy was what? How old were you, Jimmy, back then? Like. We don't want them to know my age. <laughs> uh, my followers think I'm 35. My, my bad, Jimmy. Doubtful. I know. Hey. 
Well, I was gonna have Anthony grab some product, but I realized we wanna probably start where we started and end where we yeah. last finished. That way we, oh, you know what I did forget? The dang mirror. That thing's slick, isn't it? It's shiny. Looks awesome. I'm gonna just squeeze right here. So in hindsight, I probably should have done that before the pillars because if you look at the pad, remember when uh, Levi was talking about oxidation, that's why all the oxidation picked up on the pad. Pad was not that dirty prior to doing the uh, pillars. So if you drive a car that has the black pillars, definitely save that for last. All right, Levi, how can I help you? You can take over wiping this off. Well, I can do that. Mike? Yeah. No problem. I'll let you finish off that side of the roof though. Okay. Okay, I have another question for you. Okay. When you're spraying bead maker on the, whether it's the windows or the panels, do you have any method of doing like the box method or anything of that sort? No, usually I just wipe to make sure there's no streaks. Okay. Um, you can do the box method, but when you're doing an exterior glass like yeah. this and you're applying a sealant, it's more about making sure you didn't leave any streaks. Okay. Now, a lot of people will say, oh, but the box method helps eliminate that. Yeah, it does, but it also just depends on the product and how easy or hard it is to take off. Gotcha. So. I did this window too, so you can start, you can wipe that. Yeah. I tell you what, this bead maker, so traditionally, you know, prior to detailing cars with polishers and, you know, this fancy, uh, you know, these fancy products that we have, I remember you doing this with a sock. <laughs> you used a sock? Don't judge me. Used a sock. This Gabe, was... in 23 years, I've never used a sock to Seriously? polish anything. A diaper, maybe. <laughs> diaper, maybe. Not a sock. A sock. Wow. Okay. What kind the... of cotton was that? <laughs> it was cotton. Cotton. Oh, maybe you got a cotton poly blend sock. Can you give me a spray over here? Take that a little bit. Thanks. No. Um, so. Did your but... dad teach you how to do that? He did. Wow. It's just, it's an old school method. It I is an know. old school method. I've just, I. You didn't know people were still doing that? Uh, yeah, I'm surprised. It's like... I mean, not surprised now, but surprised back then. I guess for me, it'd be equivalent to a kid coming into my video broadcasting class and saying, hey, do you have literally any film because my roll is empty? Yeah. Yeah, okay, I got you, I got you. It's like, yeah, it was done at one point, but... But, but anyways, back to what I was going okay. to say. Yeah. Is that before we were so rudely interrupted with your sock? Jeez, a little man. No, what I was going to say is it used to be ridiculously hard wiping off uh, waxes and or compounds. Oh, yeah, you were using a sock. <laughs> See if a baby diaper would have worked better. What did I open the door to? I'm just amazed. He's I honestly never... like I've never. Yeah. Never, that's Wow, that was something new, man. I didn't know that. You know, if it makes you feel any better, it's been a really long time. Oh, I'm sure it has. I'm just saying. I I mean... When you open the door to socks, what's next? Yeah. I have no clue. <laughs> I have no clue. I can, I can honestly say, so, though. So does, does your dad go like, Yeah, that's my good sock. What are you doing? That's my detailing. No, no. That's my detailing sock. My dad, my dad typically goes. Or he's like takes his off and hands them to you. Or no, my hey, dad, son. he typically says, oh yeah, you guys at the rag company, you're pretty good, huh? Well, he does uh, say that, yeah. Well, uh, what, do you th what would they think? Did, did, do they like this? Like he waxed my truck the other day and I'm pretty sure he used a sock. He, Don't yeah. worry, it's going to Levi. 
<laughs> yeah, let's just say you did okay, except for all the wax all over the trim oh. that turned your new truck white. So it was nice <laughs> of them to do that. People either learn or they don't, and detailers discover. Yeah. Well, guys, just hey, know. At least he tried. He tried. He, he tried. He loves and you. And I really, truly appreciate it. But no, I have not used a sock myself in a long time. He's going to love watching this video because you know he will. It's a family car. <laughs> yeah. He'll be like, hey, I noticed you, uh, you and Levi did a really good job. You missed a spot. So I pulled out the old sock. I got the sock out. Don't have to worry. <laughs> yeah, I, wow, I'm <laughs> He's still shocked. I'm really stuck on that. <laughs> shell socked. He's oh <laughs> shell socked. Oh. Dane. Uh, that's funny. And you have to go home again. <laughs> yeah, so we started a new thing. When somebody says something just outlandish, we send them home. I'm just kidding, guys. This doesn't happen. We're a pretty chill bunch here at the Rack Company. Ah, uh, this looks so it's good. It's sore, but... It's going. Dude, go easy. That's probably sore now, too. <laughs> What's sore? He just smacked his leg on that. The trick is to be smooth and act like you didn't have it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I remember it. Yep. <laughs> Heard it, but as long as it didn't register a movement on the camera, it was good. <laughs> There's a lot of sacrifices made when you're holding these things. Mm -hmm. I honestly haven't seen this car look this shiny in a long time. Looks good. And it was quick. It was quick and easy. Which is the point of this video. Yep. Uncut, right? That's right. Uncut. I hope you we, saw all of this. I hope we didn't say anything. They don't like, mute it. The viewers are probably Let's commenting on down on the music. bottom. Like, what the heck? Turn on some music. So this thing could have still used a little more but, work on it. And that's where you said a little bit of pressure might have been yeah. helpful. A little more pressure, a little more downward pressure. But because you've gone so quickly on the whole car, you could come back, polish this spot out. Thanks for the time you said. Because I did it in 19 minutes, right, Dane? <laughs> Let's hope. Well, when we play back the tape, yeah. Gosh, I really hope I did it in 19 minutes. That would be so cool. Hi. Probably gonna be 20 minutes and three frames. Hey guys, whoever's the closest at guessing wins and the loser has to, I don't know, send our top fan a picture. Oh no, they can send him my sock. I don't want. I don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't want to do that. <laughs> no, no one thought that was funny. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Just beeps of Gabe talking. Beep 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 beep. Ah, uh, jeez. Well, the fun part of this is everybody watching the video at home already knows how long it took, but you don't know. Yeah. Because so, the number's been on the screen for a while. Yeah, it's true. It looks but I have really to edit good. that in still, so even I don't know how long it really took yet. Right? Looks good. I'm just looking to see with the light if there are any shadows, like there is one right here on the fender, to make sure I didn't miss anything. This hood needs some Dr. Color Chip is what it is. Yeah, it does, a little bit. But there you go. Ta-da. Car's done, wiped. All you got to do is dress the tires, vacuum it, do the windows inside because we've already done the outside ones. All right. And uh, that's it. It's ready to go. Uh, and hopefully now you guys see the time on the screen. It doesn't take a lot. No. Even if you're slightly no, over, it yeah. doesn't matter. It, it doesn't take a lot, but like right now I would say it's 78 in this in, in our facility. It's in more our, than that. It's like 85. <sighs> Because I'm, I'm, so, I'm not going to lie, I'm, I'm pretty hot right now. Yeah. So 
point is though, there are still scratches in the hood. Yes, there are still some little spots, but you know, the majority of what we needed to, to accomplish, it's better. This car is fairly shiny. You know, the scratch is still there. So in that sense, we could go back, touch up a couple more spots, just work it a little better, but that's not what the customer's paying for, right? right? Customer just wanted the car. It's now clean, protected, and it's much glossier. And with Beadmaker on it, with the Uno Protect on it, yeah. it's going to get glossier as it sits in here. And so, it's going to be easier to clean for future reference. It'll be easier to clean. And like we said, this is a family car that's been in your guys' family for uh, over a... Okay, yeah. so two decades. And uh, this so, car is, uh, you know, it's a well-loved piece of the uh, family. You know, you guys have all used it. It's become a loaner car for the family. Um, and it's still staying in the family, but the point is the car still looks nice. So are we allowed to add B-roll on a non-cut cut? At this point, we've done all the parts that people care about seeing on Kay. Now we can show. Okay. Dane, roll the B-roll. back from the b-roll did you see how dirty that hood looked on the front yeah that was pretty bad so it looks a lot shinier than it did yeah yeah all right we got a podcast to go do so okay. that's it guys that's the easiest way to knock out a quick 20 30 minute 19 one step uh using uno protect we use the uh, coarse wool pad from rupes and we use bead maker Easy, simple process, some 365s, and we're done. So, hope you guys like this video. Make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. For more videos, stay tuned right here, the Rag Company YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. See you guys.